everybody, it's Annette from The Art of Intuition. And today we are going to revisit a topic that I talked about a while back. Gosh, it's been a couple years, I think, since I talked about it. But it feels kind of relevant to bring it back out again. So we're going to talk about what a lot of people are going to call the void space and the loneliness that can kind of come with the void space. Now, as humans, we feel lonely. Right, you know, it, it's it's a very common thing for our human aspect to feel because we have such a disconnect inside. And that's where the loneliness comes from. We try to fill it with everything outside, and, and that's not kind of the fallacy of our of our human aspect. It's always looking for something outside to fill the void inside. So when we're in periods of trying to grab everything we can, that's when our human aspect is sort of at its it's normal form, I guess we should say. It, it's always kind of grabbing for something. It's always kind of reaching for something, but it doesn't really know what it's reaching for. It doesn't really know what it's trying to grab onto. And it always feels lonely. You know, there's the old adage that it feels lonely in a room full of people because it's not the people that make it feel better. So then you go through your awakening, which is going to be different for everyone. What causes that? We've talked about that ad nauseum, I think, on here on, on what can what can kind of bring that on. Whether it's every you probably finally get to that place, you know, in your human existence where you have everything you want and you're still you still feel like you're happy. Or you almost get it all and then it all kind of falls down around you and you're like, what did I do all this for? So we're always kind of in a state or one or the other. And once we get to our awakening process, a lot of people kind of think our awakening, our ascension are sort of the same thing. And they're different processes. You know, our awakening is just sort of where we become conscious. But then we get to a point of higher consciousness, but we can't hit higher consciousness until we hit consciousness. And I've made the comment before that sometimes we can make conscious choices, but from unconscious places. And that's kind of where we are with, with this when we're in kind of that part of the journey, we're kind of making more conscious choices, but they're not higher consciousness choices, but they are conscious choices as we understand that we are in control. Maybe we might not believe we're in control of everything yet, but we believe we're in control of enough of it to where we can impact the outcome. We just don't really realize how much we can impact the outcome. We still kind of feel like we can impact the outcome, but we don't, we don't really get to the magnitude of how much we can. So we go from, consciousness to higher consciousness and the higher conscious comes from just continuing to make more conscious choices and in time we start getting ourselves out of certain realities we didn't really even realize we were imprisoned ourselves in and that's when ascension kind of starts <laughs> when you start kind of looking at things and going i don't know why i'm participating in that i don't know why i'm even in that even though we're still running a program of why we're doing it we might be trying to stand up to an establishment no matter what it is for us, whether it's people that are in our life that have always maybe told us what to do or we allowed that and we can start standing up for that thing. Okay, I'm not going to be told what to do anymore. But we can still have some victim energy playing out in it. We can still have a story behind it. We can still feel like it's their fault. We can still put a lot of programming around it, even though our choice is to not, not do that anymore. But I did a video not too long ago about, you know, when we start doing that in realities, they start to crumble down because they're built on us being subservient. And that's what the realities were trying to get us not to be. So they had to get harder and harder and harder for us to say, okay, this is bullshit. I'm out of this reality. But until we get to that point, we stay in them, you know. And when we start saying no, they start to crumble. And once they start to crumble, then we're left with a lot of realities that, start to kind of fall down around us. And then we just go deeper and deeper inside because we don't know where else to go. You'll start to find material that will push you more inside. You'll start to get perhaps interested in more of that kind of what people call metaphysical stuff. You know, some people call it woohoo stuff. Some people call it hippie stuff. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what you call it. But when you're in that seeker phase of whether it's crystals and daras, looking at different Reiki practices, looking, reading books about the metaphysical stuff or how energy, how our thoughts create our world, you know, all these things that we just keep searching for something else. And a lot of times the carrot that gets dangled in front of us is the carrot to keep us going, whatever it is we thought we wanted, whether it was money or love, 
or romance, it didn't matter what it was, it, it'll just keep dangling that carrot in front of us for us to keep going and going and going and going. And we just keep going deeper inside and deeper inside until we realize that none of that stuff is what we were looking for in the first place. But it takes a while to get there. We have to then hit the higher consciousness aspects. We start meditating more. We start being able to tap into higher consciousness. We start getting downloads, you know. And they're still coming outside in because we're not at the frequency of the information yet. So because we're not at the frequency of the information, it feels like it's coming down to us. In a way it is. It's coming from a higher version of us down to where our body is setting. That's why we always talk about getting the body's vibration up here because that's you can't find yourself in a different reality if you or you keep planting your feet in the old one. If you, if you root your vibration in the old reality, then you can't you can't get the body to where the new soul line realities exist. So we don't even really know what that is in the beginning because we keep trying to compare it back to our human realities. But there are times in our ascension process where I feel like that was a long way to kind of go around to explain it. And I kind of lost my light too, but that's okay. I'll, I'll put it in post. I'll put some in post. Um, oh, maybe I can do it. There we go. There we go. Um, okay, where was I? So we get to certain parts of our ascension where we don't have the creativity we normally have. We don't have the, sometimes we don't even have the interest in what we normally do. It can come sometimes after a lot of physical stuff. I don't, I'm going to go into a lot of physical stuff with my ear quite a bit and emotional stuff too will start coming up. You will start having memories come up, but that's a good sign we're in a big clearing phase. And there takes a while when you're in a clearing phase to be able to get in a receiving phase. It's kind of two different things in the beginning of our ascension and kind of in the middle too. There takes a while for, and our ascension process kind of goes on forever. There are different stages of it. H harder phases, I guess, more challenging phases for our body, more challenging phases emotionally for us. We kind of go through different iterations of it. We kind of go through different um stages of it but we're kind of always in it it's just what part are you in and then I, I feel like it does become easier because you you just start to identify with it more and, and you start just understanding that a lot of stuff you can do more energetically than getting all wrapped around really what's going on but for a while when you're in a clearing you're not going to be able to tr receive so if you're in a big clearing if you're in a big, um, almost just memories come up from nowhere. Memories you haven't thought of in forever. You're, you're clearing your human Akash. You know, you're, you're reminiscing. You, you feel kind of nostalgic. I know I've been a lot, I've been around a lot of people lately that are very nostalgic, getting out old pictures, wanting to look at old stuff. And every time I see that, I know they're getting ready to shift into something else because they're going back and reminiscing about the old stuff. And every time we reminisce about the old stuff, we're getting ready to shift. So you might have a big clearing at that point. And there can be some loneliness there. And every time you start to feel that, we just go deeper in. Because that's the only thing we know how to do. It means that the level now that we have reached is no longer enough for us. You know, we have to go deeper within ourselves to get to that next level. We're starting to feel like the connection I have isn't enough anymore. You know, I have to go deeper in and deeper in. And it's always going to be deeper in. And when we're in that big clearing, we're clearing out all that space. You know, we're clearing out the memories. We can be clearing out the emotion. Our body can be going through a lot of physical stuff to get us ready for that next phase. And a lot of times when we're there, we can't, we can't receive two. Like I said, there will be a time when you can do both. You can, you can say, okay, I'm in a clearing, but I can receive and I can do a video or I can get some information. Sometimes you can receive and just write it down and know you'll do it later. And that's when we get back to what people call the void. You know, what is that void? And the void is weird because we're always so full of information and so full of things we want to do. You know, every time I do videos now, I kind of like to be able to watch what I'm doing because I, I tend to not let my eyes wander as much. And the last year or so, they wander all the time because I notice I'm reading my field. You know, I, I'm going to different places. I'm looking at different places to where the information is I want to bring in. And it, it even distracts me when I watch them back because I notice my eyes are all over the place. But in videos three, two, two years ago, they weren't like that. 
but now they are because I've gained more access and I can bring more information. That's why my videos tend to be longer now because there's more information I can bring in that doesn't seem relevant, but in the, in the end it is relevant because it's relevant in a nonlinear way. So we get into those void spaces, which I've been in a big void the last week or so myself, two weeks, maybe three weeks, where you just kind of don't you know what you want to talk about. You know, you don't, you don't really have any urge to talk about anything. But there does feel an important to come on and say that when you're in those spaces, that's a natural part of the process. You know, you're not, you've not lost the connection. You're just going deeper in to find the new one. Because it can feel kind of, scary is really not much the word. It just kind of feels kind of like a, you know, because the drive, the creation is our drive. Uh, creation is our soul drive. And, you know, we're not driven by emotions anymore. We're driven by creation. And when you don't feel that, it can feel like I don't know what to do with myself. But know that your body is rewriting. Your body's trying to lift out of the template it's in. It's trying to clear. You know, it's trying to do all these things. And when I normally get out of a void, I'm assuming it'll be similar this time, but you never know. I usually get a lot of new ideas and stuff I want to do or, or new information. We get new information we want to talk about and bring forth. But the void is a critical part of the process. We can't really fight the void. We can't let the fear get to us. So what am I going to do? I don't know what I'm supposed to do with myself. You know, we have to kind of understand that everything's going to realign. We have to have the patience to let it do that. We have to have the patience to allow that even though that can feel kind of daunting a lot of times. Like we don't want to take the time. We don't want to have the patience. It's a very important part of the process when you're in the void spaces. Sometimes they can last for months. Sometimes they last for days. Sometimes they last for weeks. It's not a um, linear thing. And none of this is a linear thing. So if you're in a void, if you're in a clearing, and you're not getting any downloads, like I said, to me, I feel like we're always getting them. We're just not as conscious of them when we're clearing. It's kind of like when we're out in public. I've said a lot of times when you're out in public and your body's trying to hold down the field, because if you're the highest vibration in the field, it's your responsibility to hold your field. And if you're holding your field, you can't, you don't have as much access because your body's trying, your energy feels trying to do something else, you know, so you're not going to have as much foresight in a way. You're not going to be able to read everything going on around you. But I still feel like you get it. You just might be the next day before it more registers consciously with you. So I've always been in the thing that even though consciously you might not be able to transmit, transmit and receive at the same time. Like to me when I'm talking, I'm transmitting. And, and I can transmit and receive at the same time now. Even when I'm in a void, I, I can find something. But it's not normally what I'm feeling when I'm what I'm doing it. You know, it feels different. It, it feels like it comes from a, it's coming from kind of a place in the middle. You know, it's in the middle, not quite where I was and not quite where I will be. So when you're in those spots and you start to feel that, just continue to let the process go. It's an organic process. You know, let it work itself out. Know that you will come out of your void. When your body's ready, when you're ready for the next thing, and everything's got to realign. And sometimes people have to align. And it's just not time for those people yet. And they're not in the space yet. So they have to come on and realign too. So just stay with it. <laughs> stay with it. Don't panic when you're in the void. Don't panic when you're starting to feel that you feel lonely and you don't know why. Especially when you have always been very connected. Sometimes your powers go offline too. You know, like I said, you're not as precognitive. You don't have the vision. You know, you feel like you're just kind of floating out there. All very normal. All very common. And it's just part of ascension. And sometimes it's a part a lot of people will talk about. Sometimes it's a part, parts of life people don't want to talk about. People don't want to paint a scary, you know, a scary look at ascension. And ascension isn't scary. It's just when we don't know what's going on, it can feel scary. But the more we talk about it, the less... And we understand that other people are going through the same type of thing. Maybe not the same moment we are, but they're always going through the same type of thing. Some, at some point they will be. The ascension journey is not completely different for everyone. It's got a similar cadence to it for everybody. Similar things happen. Body templates happen. Body wipes happen where your, your templates get wiped and it's building a new one. We talked about our human template. We talk about our soul template. We talk about all of it. 
because we have to allow the body time to rewrite. So when you're in these places, just do what you usually I'll usually I'll binge something on Netflix or when I'm in these places. And every time there's something new for me to binge, I know I'm going to avoid. I'm like, oh, look, my show, my show I haven't watched is out and I can watch it now. So your universe will give you a clue. If you're not sure if you're in a void, you'll know. You'll know. It'll be other things to distract you in a sense to not focus on what you're in the void. You might want to rest a lot. You might be hungry. You might not be hungry. You might want totally different foods. Every time I come out of a void, I tend to uh, want different foods. Or my, I don't want the same things or I don't want as much food. I kind of start to keep paring my food down every time I come out of one. So, okay. I think that covers it. Keep practicing the art of intuition.